the doctor explains that Liam's seizure was probably triggered by his pneumonia and fever. It's something that does happen fairly often in small children. They just they overheat and have a seizure from it. They said it, nothing really to worry about. Sure, felt you know a little reassured. He recommends giving Liam an over-the-counter fever medication. Over the next two days, Daryl and Desiree follow the doctor's advice. And thankfully, Liam's seizures seem to subside. Then one morning, about a week after Liam first got sick, Desiree goes to wake him and notices something strange. He was laying in the crib with his arm out straight. His head was all the way to the right. Eventually, Liam snaps out of his trance-like state. But then he went right back into another one. And at that point, the eyes started to roll back into his head. When you see somebody's eyes rolling back in their head, it's terrifying. He needs to go to the hospital. Desiree and Daryl rush Liam to the ER. There, he is seen by pediatric infectious disease specialist, Dr. Nicholas Bennett. So when I saw Liam for the first time, although he was seizing, uh, it wasn't a, a typical febrile seizure. A febrile seizure would normally affect the whole body. Liam's seizures, though, were more focal. They involved one arm primarily as opposed to the rest of his body. Instead, Dr. Bennett suspects the cause of his seizures is some kind of infection in the brain. So Dr. Bennett and his team order an MRI, and the results confirm his theory. So after I reviewed the scans, we knew he had encephalitis of some kind. Encephalitis is an inflammation of the brain, often triggered by a viral infection. The condition can lead to fever, seizures, and even death. But what's triggering Liam's encephalitis remains a mystery. In most cases of encephalitis, you see inflammation towards the outside of the brain, in the cerebral cortex. But Liam's scans were different. They were unusual. He had inflammation in a much deeper part of the brain, so it wasn't clear what the diagnosis was. They had uh, EKGs going. He had IVs in them. They ran him through tons of antibiotics. They didn't know what was going on. And to Daryl and Desiree's dismay, Liam's seizures show no signs of easing. It was just nonstop. The scariest part was basically that they were giving him medication to control it, and it wasn't controllable. I mean, seizures, you're risking damage to the brain. The biggest fear was that, you know, that this virus was going to kill Liam. Uh, it was and there was nothing we could do about it. Then, 24 hours after Liam was admitted into the hospital, Dr. Bennett comes across what could be the key to solving the mystery. When you examined him, you could see, uh, just below the, the right knee, a little area of redness. So when I spoke to the family, one of the things they revealed was that uh, Liam had had a, a tick exposure. At the time, Desiree and Daryl hadn't thought much of the incident, as the tick was only there for a few hours at most. But with this new information, Dr. Bennett now has a hunch what could be making Liam sick. Most infections that are transmitted by ticks, things like Lyme disease, can take a day or two to transmit from a feeding tick. I knew, though, that there was another infection that could be transmitted very quickly, this one virus probably is the most severe virus you can get from a tick. Five-month-old Liam Phillips is suffering from uncontrollable seizures, putting him at risk for permanent brain damage. And now, Dr. Nicholas Bennett may have uncovered the reason why. To confirm his theory, Dr. Bennett sends out a sample of Liam's blood for one final check. I wanted them to test for this one virus. The results reveal that Liam is battling one of nature's deadliest pathogens. And it determined that Liam had the Powassan virus. 
The Poasson virus is spread to humans by infected ticks. Inside Liam's body, the virus has infiltrated his central nervous system. There, it attacks the cells, causing his fever, seizures, and swelling in the brain. We had never heard of the Powassan virus before. I didn't know what it was. It's a very rare virus infection. Liam's case was the first reported case in this state, in Connecticut. But also, Powassan virus probably is the most severe virus you can get from a tick. Compared to other tick-borne diseases, Powassan virus is especially dangerous because of the speed with which it can be transmitted from the tick to the host. A tick carrying Powassan only needs to be attached to its host for 15 minutes in order to transfer the disease. Compare that to Lyme disease, which requires up to 24 hours. And if a virus-carrying tick isn't detected quickly, the effects can be devastating. About 60% of Powassan cases result in permanent disability or even death. No, my biggest fear was that, you know, that this virus was going to kill Liam. Uh, it was, and there was nothing we could do about it. I mean, it was hard because, you know, they're doing everything that they can. I'm sorry. But Desiree and Daryl soon receive more bad news. At the moment, for Powassan, we don't have a vaccine or a treatment for the virus. All Dr. Bennett can do is prescribe medications to manage Liam's symptoms and hope that his body fights off the infection. We didn't know whether he could end up going into a coma, and ultimately, he could die from this. In the ICU, as doctors administer the treatment, Desiree and Daryl watch over Liam praying that he'll turn around. He looked lifeless. The seizures were just taking everything that he had. It was real hard to see him in that state. The Powassan virus is carried by three types of ticks, but it's most prevalent in one, the deer tick. Over the past two decades, deer tick populations have been surging and they're now found in nearly half of all U.S. counties. And Daryl and Desiree think they know when Liam was exposed. I had been hunting one morning, one of those crazy mornings when you have kids. So I just came home and started helping with Liam. He didn't have the time to get changed before taking him. The couple believes that the tick that bit their son came from Daryl's hunting clothes. And later that day, I went to change him and found a tick on the back of his knee. It was only on there for about, you know, two, three hours. And he seemed fine. But the tick only has to be on for 15 minutes in order for you to get the virus. For four days, Liam remains in the ICU. We didn't know whether Liam was going to start to get better or, or continue to get worse. But then, miraculously, there's a change in Liam's condition. We were able to get the seizures under control by juggling the doses and types of anti-seizure medications that he was given. It was definitely a good sign that he was on the mend. Liam's recovery really was pretty remarkable. Liam spends seven days in the hospital. After he's released, he undergoes physical therapy for the next several weeks. Today, he is almost fully recovered. He's got a slight weakness on the right side, but he's doing great today. He's just a happy-go-lucky kid, loving life. 